This report brought to you by the Richmond Club, where investors and high growth companies meet. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Our first speaker is the CEO of Lexaria Bioscience. Please welcome Mr. Chris Bunka. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Um, I'll try to speak loudly enough that you can all hear me. Uh, I am the CEO of Lexaria Bioscience. We are a publicly traded company, LXX in Canada, LXRP in the United States. Um, we are a biotech company that has become uh, quite um, happily, enthusiastically adopted by the cannabis industry, among others. We operate currently in three existing business verticals. One is nicotine, one is hemp, and the third is cannabis. We have set up separate corporate subsidiaries to handle our various business lines. Um, and the pending business vertical that we expect to enter later this year, or early 2020, will be the pharmaceutical industry. Um, I know that Canada, Toronto, is the center of the cannabis investing world. It's benefited our company. Um, but I would ask you to have a look at that little yellow pie chart there in the middle of the page, because cannabis is the little green slice of what we do. And the yellow section of that pie chart is the nicotine business. The nicotine business is a trillion dollar mature existing business. And our company has already completed a joint venture with one of the biggest nicotine companies on the planet. Um, we're very happy to be working in the cannabis industry. We have a number of corporate licensees that we're gonna talk about. Um, but really, it's not where the big money is. This is the U.S. cannabis market, which FYI is rapidly overtaking and has overtaken the Canadian cannabis industry, both from a regulatory and from a financial point of view. Lexaria operates in both countries. The uh, Canadian cannabis industry, I'm talking legal industries because I don't care about anything that's not. The legal Canadian cannabis industry is less than a billion dollars. Um, the current uh, U.S. size in the 33 states where cannabis is currently legal in the U.S. is over 10 billion now, and that excludes hemp, which is another 2 billion. And again, just to give you an idea, there's that same little pie chart of where we are busy. We are busy both in cannabis and in nicotine uh, and hemp these days. We have a lot going on. Our company is a little bit complicated because we bat kind of above our pay grade, if you will. Um, we have run uh, somewhere between 15 and 20 sets of clinical animal studies. We're one of the first companies in the world to have run a human clinical study a little over a year ago, all of them focused on cannabis. We've also run uh, over a dozen studies in animals on nicotine absorption. What we found is that cannabinoids, whether they are psychoactive or not, delivered with our technology in a glass of water, in a cracker, in a chocolate, in a candy, in a pill, we don't care. We deliver up to 811% more of it with our tech than without. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm not talking about 20% or 30% improvements. 800% more, clinically proven. We have eight commercial licensed agreements signed across North America in the cannabis and hemp industries. Um, a catalyst is something for you to realize as investors is that up until this point in time, our revenue has been generated from a single licensee in Colorado. And that is about to change through these new license agreements, four of which we've signed in the last three months with companies that will be beginning their operations in the next two quarters. So we're expecting a dramatic uptake uh, and increase in our revenue production. On the right side of the page, you see our nicotine slide. Uh, we have signed a deal in January of this year with Altria Corp. Altria Corp's non-smokable nicotine division is four times larger than the entire Canadian cannabis industry. That is where we play. We have signed an agreement with Altria. They are giving us money for R&D, product commercialization and development. We will, own, we will earn a royalty 
on all new non-smokable forms of nicotine delivered by Altria using our tag. Because we're a royalty company, we do not sell a product. We do not sell machinery. We sell knowledge. And because we're so good at it, we earn a 90 to a 99% profit margin on our royalties. We're not like other companies you see. Our technology, whether it is being applied to ibuprofen, whether it's being applied to cannabis, whether it's being applied to nicotine, offers the same general benefits, which are we get rid of nasty, strong, bitter flavors. We rapidly and incredibly dramatically improve the speed of onset, how fast the drug gets into your bloodstream. We increase the bioavailability or the proportion of the drug that you swallow that ends up in your bloodstream. The most amazing work that we've done in the last 12 months, but particularly in the last six months, is the blood-brain barrier absorption, which I'll speak about in a minute. We have had, believe it or not, in animal testing over 1900%, 1900% increases in delivering nicotine and cannabinoids into brain tissue. And our technology is very simple and it's very cost effective for our commercial clients to implement. We currently have 11 patents already granted. We have 60 more pending. We have one of the largest IP portfolios in the world in what we do. The patents that have already been granted are for the delivery of cannabinoids, nicotine, NSAIDs like ibuprofen and others, and even fat-soluble vitamins. We are patent pending on estrogen, testosterone, phosphodiesterase inhibitors, things like Viagra and Cialis, and many other molecule classes. You can imagine the difference we can make with drug delivery if we are able to lower the dosage required to treat a condition or to treat pain. When we lower the quantity of, say, ibuprofen that's required to enter the bloodstream, we, we decrease the load on the liver and kidneys, for example. Uh, cannabinoids and oral delivery. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time on this slide. There's a lot of data here. I want to make a point. We've been operating in the United States for five years. We've been around for a while. We're not a, a, a fairly well new, new company that just started, thought this would be a great idea. It, with our clients in states like Colorado and Oregon and Washington, we have multiple years of data. And in every state and in Canada, where data is starting to be generated, we are finding that when you give consumers the choice between smoking cannabis and some other form of delivery, they choose not to smoke. The proportion of cannabinoid sales in every legal market in the world that is being sold as in, a, in a smokable format is decreasing. And the proportion being sold in an oral, which could be a beverage, a pill, a topical, could be a number of different things, is increasing. That's where we play. We have nothing to do with smokable forms of drug delivery. On the left-hand side, I have to just take a minute to explain this. There's only so many ways you can get a drug into your body. You could use a, a hypodermic needle and inject it straight into your bloodstream. That will give you 100% bioavailability, which means you had a quantity of drug and 100% of it got into your bloodstream. There is no such thing as more than 100%. And there is no such thing as any other form of drug delivery approaching 100%. Companies that make those claims are not being honest. It is not possible. Inhalation through your lungs, pulmonary absorption, cigarettes and, and uh, 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 marijuana cigarettes, will deliver somewhere between 30 and 40 percent of the drug that's in the actual cigarette. The rest goes up in smoke or doesn't get absorbed into the bloodstream. It's one of the most highly bioavailable ways of ingesting a drug. It's very effective. But it's not what your body was designed to do. It will kill you over time if you smoke cigarettes. And it annoys the hell out of people around you. Sublingual, drugs you put under your tongue, nitroglycerin or headache medications or a number of other medications, is about half the delivery. About 16% of that drug will enter your bloodstream. It's also very, very fast. And then oral, the GI. This is how nature created you. You're supposed to swallow things and you're supposed to go into your stomach and then into your intestine and then through your liver. Uh, for fat-soluble drugs, 
you're eating lunch right now, the greens that you just ate, if there's spinach in there, they are going to, there's a compound in spinach that will create nitric oxide release in your uh, 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 cardiovascular system. Spinach salads lower blood pressure through cardiovascular release of nitric oxide, which is a vasodilator. Um, and cannabidiol does the same thing, CBD from cannabis, if you get it into the bloodstream. What we do is we deliver these drugs through the oral means that your body is designed for as though you were smoking. We give you the 30 to 40% bioavailability of smoking through the GI. On the right hand side of the screen here, you can see the human clinical results of the test we did last year in the dark black. We dosed uh, people at a European medical hospital and we noticed at the 30 minute mark we had 300% more CBD in bloodstream than did generic, C, uh, uh, generic cannabidiol. So equal doses, our technology, way faster and way more. And that is the point of it. If you have a glass of wine, you do not want to experience the effects of that wine six hours later. You need to experience it quickly. And that is a problem with cannabis and it's a problem that we saw. On the lower left hand side, I can also tell you that we're one of the first studies, if not the first study in the world, that we actually proved that we lower blood pressure through our version of cannabidiol with our tech. No other study that I'm aware of has ever done that. And we did it 2.4 pounds, which was statistically significant. That can actually increase lifespan. And you can't do that unless you're effective at delivering that drug, which we are. I'm not gonna spend much time on this slide because I don't have a lot of time and I wanna talk about the nicotine. On the right hand side though, I wanna make this point. In 2017, we only had two licensees and only one of them was generating revenue. Things have changed for Lexaria, and although our stock's at a 52-week low and it drives me crazy, the company has never been doing better. We now have four cannabis clients, four hemp clients, and one nicotine client. We have nine licensees compared to two, two years ago, and eight of those nine are, are just about to start to enter revenue generation for us. Things have never looked better for us than they do right now. So nicotine is not the same as tobacco. You need to know that. Tobacco is the number one cause of preventable death in the world. Nicotine is not. Nicotine is the only drug that has found use successfully for some treatment of Alzheimer's. Not delivered through smoking, but delivered through capsules or intravenous. Seven million people a year die from smoking cigarettes, not from nicotine. What Lexaria has done with Altria Corp is enter into an agreement wherein they're giving us 100% of the R&D budget, 100% of the product development budget, 100% of the regulatory budget to bring oral forms of nicotine products to the US market. I mentioned earlier, they already have a plus $3 billion business in non-smokable nicotine. They are the biggest tobacco company and nicotine company in the Western Hemisphere. We will earn a royalty, I'm not allowed to disclose the rate, uh, with all the products that they introduce into the market that have our technology within. And as I mentioned about the cannabis industry, if you give people an actual choice, they choose not to smoke. Well, guess what? If you give people who are smoking cigarettes a choice, they choose not to kill themselves. That's why vaping has taken off, because it doesn't kill people. It's not healthy, but it's not as bad as smoking a cigarette and oral is way better. A Couple of quick pieces of, of data here, top right hand corner in animal studies that we conducted last year. This is some of the data that Altria saw, they saw the fine tuned data that caused them to invest $12 million in us. We delivered 560% more nicotine into the brain in one study, 295% more in another study. This is important because nicotine receptors are in your brain. Finally, a little bit of a competitive landscape. With our technology, we get rid of bad flavors. No sugar. Don't need to add sugar, no artificial ingredients. We deliver drugs to the bloodstream through your stomach in as quick as two minutes. Two minutes. And we have Tmax maximum levels in 45 to 120 minutes. 
two to eight fold increases in blood plasma concentrations, up to 1900% increases in brain concentrations. We've been well studied, dozens of animal studies, human clinical, and lots of in vivo work. Our stock's at a 52 week low, go figure. It's the way it works, right? Drives me crazy, I'm the biggest shareholder. I have 13 and a half million shares. I've never sold a share in 10 years in this company. Lexari is changing the world in the way drugs are delivered. We're doing it in cannabis. We're doing it in nicotine. We've tested it with the National Research Council of Canada, which is one of our partners, for both of those drugs, as well as for ibuprofen and for others that are underway. It's a great time to own stock in this company. Thanks very much. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know. You've been watching the Richmond Club Report. If you've just come across this channel, please feel free to like and subscribe. I'm sure you'll find a lot of interesting and lucrative investment and trading ideas around here. We'll see you again soon on the next video. Cheers, guys. Have an amazing and profitable day.